In this section of this tutorial, we will go through the roughing out of the flange part using the 2D geometry. The first thing we'll do is create a facing operation. We'll create these from scratch so that you can see everything that goes into it. Facing is inside of the roughing process. And in the roughing process, you will see offset for pocketing, offset with cleanup and zigzag also for pocketing, and here face milling for obvious face milling work. Let's look at the front of this part to determine is there any stock above the part to be taken off, and there is. This gray cube is the Gibbs Cam standard cube, which is controlled here on document control. And as you can see, we have a quarter of an inch of extra stock on the top of the part. So our toolpath will start at Z.25 and end at Z0. Our master clearance plane is set to one inch above the part and the operation entry and exit planes are set to a hundred thousandths above the top surface of the part. We will be machining stock, not a particular shape. We'll be using one direction, which will give us our best flatness. And we will have our start corner at X plus Y minus with our first cut direction of X minus. Roll in entry will perform a clockwise roll in for each pass because that will give us a better surface finish at the entry point and also make our inserts last longer. Our Z step desired is too much for this cutter. This cutter can only handle 0.22 on this 45 degree cut. So we're going to lower this to 0.1 and make it three even passes of 0.0833. That will give us approximately a nine horsepower cut. If we change this to 0.2, it would give this approximately a 15 horsepower cut. So let's go back to 0.1 and let's look at this clearance value. This clearance value is where the cutter goes before it starts cutting and it clears here on the X plus side. And when it goes off the end, it will also clear by the half inch. Since we are machining stock in our face milling, there is no need to select any geometry. It senses the amount of stock and the location of stock and all we have to do is click do it. Now that we have a tool path, let's go to OpSim and watch the face mill cut. That was a little fast, so we'll slow down the throttle, rewind and play. And as you can see, the clockwise roll ends and we did this in three passes. The top of this part is now Z0. If you're using the plug-in of Show Position, and we have it plugged in here on the bottom of the screen, when you click on the top surface, you will see that D depth is zero. That is now the zero top of the part. We're going to move to roughing out the outside of the part right now. Roughing out the inside of a part would be pocketing. Roughing out the outside of the part will be boss milling. Let's take this half inch helical solutions cutter with a 45 degree helix and five flutes and ALTI encoding, which is suitable for materials, steel materials and stainless materials, and even exotic high temperature alloys like Inconel and titanium. Let's select volume mill. It's the new modern roughing tool path. It takes half the time and gives us four times better tool life. And it does not give us the part distortion that old school roughing does. When we get to volume mill, let's select technology expert because it will calculate all of our feeds, speeds, width of cut and depth of cut. We only have to explain to it what type of material we're cutting, what the Rockwell or Brunel value is, what's the machine taper that we're using. 
What's the machine's maximum RPM? Maximum feed rate. On the workpiece holding slider bar, this determines the aggressiveness of the cut. And we'll also put the cutting aggressiveness right in the middle. We want to start in the midpoint, never towards aggressive and rigid. The tool path type is volume mill. The tool holder is going to be hydraulic chuck. And the tool is coded. Technology expert for my volume mill and Gibbs cam has already figured out our RPM, our feed rate, our depth of cut, and our step over. Apply all and the feeds, speeds, and depth of cut are set. We now need to set the Z top of the tool path, which will be zero, and the Z bottom of the tool path, which would normally be 1.250. So we're going to make it minus 1.280 so that when we flip the part over on the other side, we will have some material to face off and we won't have a rough burr edge at the minus 1250. Notice that our Z step desired is one inch. We can go with volume mill two times the diameter of the cutter. Now, the geometry that we have here is simply this. And if we select this, and let's set our minimum tool path radius at 0.225, which is just below the radius of the cutter. We'll talk more about this in just a moment. We're going to leave 25 thousandths of XY stock, and we're going to set this to helix. One degree helix is fine. When we press the do it button, you'll see the process manager generating the tool path, and it generated a pocket. How do we turn this pocket into a boss? The way we do that is we create a boundary around the outside of the stock that becomes the boundary that says this is no longer a pocket, this is now an outside shape or a boss. We're going to use a new tool to create that boundary under Geometry Palette, Shapes, Box, and there's a new button here in GibbsCam 2022 called Mouse Shape Mode. We click Mouse Shape Mode. I'm going to click the Center Justification click right in the middle of the part and now I can size my box. I want it to be just larger than the stock of the part. There is one more item that needs to be performed on this outside boundary so that it knows that this shape is a boss and not a pocket. This outside boundary is currently blue which means that it is a wall. If we were to create a tool path right now, it would create another pocket. We need to change that wall geometry to air. Modify, toggle wall air. Air geometry is red, wall geometry is blue. We will double click the outside boundary. We will double click the boss shape. And let's make a few changes to our process. Minimum tool path radius is still 225. That's just below the radius of the tool so that the tool doesn't get trapped in a 250 radius corner. If we do that, we run the risk of chatter or possibly even breaking the end mill off. We still have XY stock of 0.025. We're going to use ignore stock now instead of cavity only and we have our depth of cut set correctly. Our Z step is fine and we're going to turn helix off. Do not plunge. We have both pieces of geometry selected. Let's check our parameters one more time and click do it and you'll see the process manager is generating the tool path and now the outside shape of the part is roughed out. Let's have a look at this in op simulation. We can continue right where we left off by pressing run. And let's see what we have. Oh, we have the old process which we need to get rid of. That was our pocket process. Let's throw that one away. And let's scoot this one up. We can either drag it up 
or you can place your mouse in the empty spot, press your shift key, and double click. It and all of the other operations below it will move up and close the gap. There's our outside roughing, and we'll rewind and play. Here we have the face milling, and now we have the volume mill cutting. Notice that the volume mill cutting is marked in yellow when it starts hitting the workpiece. That's because operation two is highlighted. This is a visual clue that helps us determine which cutter is working on the part right now. The volume mill toolpath is round and has variable radius and variable feed rate input. It is a modern high speed toolpath and again, it makes your cutters last longer. It takes half as long to cut as the old school roughing. And there is dramatically less part distortion because of the light, fast cuts. Now, on the next operation, we get to reuse this process. And we're going to make little, if any, changes to it other than use stock material only because we have already removed some stock from this area and now we're going to double click the inner step because we have to rough the inner step. Let's change the depth to minus one and click do it. You'll see the process manager creating the toolpath and now you will see that we have a much smaller toolpath. Gibbscam has sensed through the material only button what material needs to be cut and where air does not need to be cut. We now have the top step in the part which is a quarter of an inch deep and it doesn't appear that we have any geometry for that step but we're going to employ a simple trick in Gibbscam. We're going to take this arc and reverse it and this arc and reverse it with control T. That command is also remember modify reverse arc. Now that we have this reversed we're going to change these three lines to air features because remember an end mill can extend outside of an air feature but it's captive by a wall feature. Modify toggle wall air. You can see now that the outer edges are red and the inner edge is blue. We will double click that piece of geometry and we're going to change one parameter and this is going to be minus 0.250 and let's select cavity only. Let's check our parameters everything looks good and press the do it button. Creating completed and as you can see, we have no toolpath. Let's go back to use stock material only and redo this operation. Now with use stock material only, it did its job and it now cut out the top step of the part. And remember, it's leaving 25 thousandths of XY stock around the edges of this part. The roughing of this part is now complete. In the next segment, we will concentrate on drilling the holes and performing the finishing and the chamfering.